Ever wondered how to bring the vibe and energy of street art into your digital designs? Well, today I'm going to reveal the secrets to creating graffiti posters in Adobe Illustrator. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. Jump straight into Illustrator and start off with an A4 portrait document. And you can do this by going to File New, selecting the Print tab, and then selecting the A4 document and then selecting create. Once you've created the document, add your desired text to the artboard. I'm using a font called Nightbrush and I'll drop a link in the description down below. Next, right click your text and go to create outlines. And then we just want to separate each one of these words so they're on their own layer. So selecting the whole text layer and go to object on group and then simply drag a selection around one of the words, press control G to regroup those letters together. And then you just want to repeat that for each word. Now that each word is on its own layer, what we want to do is we want to reposition each one of the words and come up with a decent looking composition. And once you're happy with the composition, using the direct selection tool, what we can do is select some of the tails on some of the letters and just try and fill in some of this white space. Next, make a selection around all of the words and just go to object group. And then we just want to scale up everything and then just horizontally and vertically center everything within the artboard. With the text still selected, you want to go to object path, offset path. And we just want to offset it by about minus two millimeters just to give us an inset copy of our words. And then weight still selected, flip the solid fill over to a white stroke fill. Next, reselect everything and go to object ungroup and then go to object ungroup again, just to make sure that each one of these stroke paths can be isolated. Zoom into one of the words and then we're going to use the scissors tool, which is shortcut C on the keyboard. And what we wanna do is we wanna cut away parts of this white stroke that we don't need. Whatever's remaining will become our text highlight. So using the scissors tool, what we wanna do is we wanna select anywhere within the stroke and just click to make a cut. And then we wanna select another part of the stroke, which will then make a cut. And then we can do that as well down here on the side. And then using the direct selection tool, which is shortcut A, select the parts of the path we don't need, and then just hit the delete key. With the stroke elements that remain, what we wanna do is select the stroke and then head over to the stroke panel and select a rounded cap and a rounded join. We can also come down to the path profile and change that to a type which tapers off towards the edge. As you can see, it tapers off towards the top and we can also use this icon to flip along the path, which will flip it over to the other side. If you don't see this profile part of the stroke panel, if you click the three little lines and go to show options. And for the second stroke that's left over, what we wanna do is zoom in and again, using the scissors tool, which is shortcut C on the keyboard and just make a few further cuts just to add a bit more detail to the highlight. Once you've added that little bit of detail, what we can do is select each individual stroke and just apply that rounded cap and the rounded corner, and then also change the profile to a tapered edge, flipping it so it starts from this side and gets thinner as it gets to the top. And these two small bits, we can just use the normal profile with the rounded cap and the rounded corner. You now want to go to each word individually and do the exact same thing. So making a cut and the moving parts of the path you don't want make smaller cuts to add a bit more detail and then lastly remembering to add the rounded cap rounded corner and the tapered profile to parts of the path that need to be tapered and in the interest of time this is what i've ended up with and the stroke weight i used for the paths was three pixels Let's now group up all the white paths by using the direct selection tool and selecting one of the paths and then go to select same and then select stroke color. Then go to object group and that'll group all the paths together in one layer. We can also select our text group and assign it 
a color. If you want to follow along with the tutorial exactly, I've put the hex codes to the colors that I'm going to be using in the top left hand corner. So selecting the lightest purple for the text. And while the text is still selected, if we go to object path, offset path, and just offset the path by about three millimeters, just to give us a nice chunky border and then press okay. While everything is still selected, go to the pathfinder panel. If you don't see the pathfinder panel, just go to window and select pathfinder. And we want to use the unite option just to unite everything together and then go to edit cut and then go to edit paste in place. And what that will do is it will just put the offset shape that we've united onto its own separate layer opposed to being included within the group. And as you can see with the offset path we've got these little gaps which we can get rid of by using the direct selection tool so selecting on the keyboard select one of the points and then just hit the delete key twice and that just keeps everything tidy and then from our color group if we select our text and just assign it with the dark purple and we can use the control square bracket to send that backwards beneath our text layer and just to add a bit more color i'm going to use the direct selection tool which is shortcut a and i'm just going to select the letter i and the letter t i'm just going to give that a different color and then i'm going to select the offset shape and go to edit copy then go to edit paste in place change the solid bill color to a yellow then using the control square bracket shortcut i'm going to send that behind the original offset shape and then using the arrow keys on the keyboard i'm just going to nudge it to the right and down by three pixels so one two three and then one two three and while the shape's still selected go to edit copy then go to edit paste in place change the fill color to the darkest purple again using the control square bracket to send it behind the yellow shape and then again move it across three times or three pixels and then move it down three pixels so one two three and then one two three we're now going to add some more shading to our words and we're going to do this in the bottom part of each character and to do this select the original text group and then go to object path offset path and then we just want to offset the path by about minus 1.5 millimeters just enough so that the inset shape doesn't really touch our inner strokes and then press ok and then while it's still selected go to edit cut and then go to edit paste in place and then just fill that in with a random color just so we can see where it sits next select the line segment tool and create three horizontal lines which cuts through the center of each word and to duplicate these lines i'm just holding the alt key clicking and dragging to make a duplicate once you've added all the lines select each line by holding the shift key and then selecting each one and then we want to go to effect distort and transform and then select roughen and then we want to use something like 2%. We can leave the detail at 10 and then just change the points to smooth and then press OK. And then go to object expand appearance just to apply the roughen appearance. Then what we want to do is we want to select one of our green shapes and go to select same fill color and then just go to object group that'll make sure that everything is grouped together then select the three distorted lines along with the green text layer press shift m on the keyboard for the shape builder tool and then hold down the alt key and just delete the top portions of each letter once you've removed everything select each line and then we can just remove that all together Select all the remaining shapes and change the solid fill over to a gradient fill. And then within the gradient panel, we want to change the angle of the gradient to 90 degrees. And then the white color, which starts at the bottom, we want to select a dark shade, perhaps something a little bit darker than our lightest purple. And then the dark bit at the top, we want to change to the exact color of our lightest purple. And then select our white stroke layer, right click and go to arrange, bring to front and that'll just make sure that any strokes sit over the top of our text but any bits of the text that are a different color what we can do is if we select the shape then double click to go into isolation mode and then just singly select the shapes and then just tweak the colors to match 
And we can continue to add more detail to the text by using simple shapes. So for example, I'm using the ellipse tool and I'm just going to create a small cluster of ellipses in different sizes. Select all three shapes and just group them together. And then we can just place some of these shapes around the characters. And you can also create some stars by using the star tool under the rectangle tool menu. And again, just place those randomly across each character. Next, zoom out and let's begin to create our background. And to do this, go to select the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to click anywhere within the artboard. And then I'm going to create a rectangle the same size horizontally and vertically center that within the artboard swap the color over to our darkest purple and then we want to right click and go to arrange center back then we want to go to edit copy and go to edit paste in place swap this color over to our lightest purple and then again just drag that layer above the dark rectangle down below in the description, I've put two links to two textures. So for the first texture, I'm going to go to File and then select Place. I'm just going to select the first texture. With the texture selected, I'm going to horizontally and vertically center that within the artboard, zoom out and just rotate it so it covers everything. And then within the Layers window, I'm going to drag that texture just above the lightest purple layer and then I'm going to lock the darkest purple layer because I don't want that to be affected select both the rectangles and then go to the transparency panel if you don't see the transparency panel go to window and then select transparency and then I'm just going to select the make mask button and then I'm going to select invert mask and what that will do is it will just add some texture to the background and we can do the exact same again with another texture. So selecting the rectangle tool, pick anywhere within the artboard, create another rectangle exactly the same dimensions, horizontally and vertically center it, drag that layer just above the last texture layer, go to file place and then select the second texture. And then I'm just going to zoom out, rotate it and make sure it covers the whole area. Drag the texture layer above the rectangle, select both layers and then go to make mask. And if you wanted to, you can invert this one as well but for this specific texture i think the non-inverted version looks a lot better and then we can just lock those rectangles in place to stop them from moving and then finally you can finish off the poster with some typical graffiti effects so you could look at adding some paint drips maybe some more line art with some graffiti symbols and then finally adding some final graffiti text and there you have it You've unlocked the secrets to creating graffiti posters in Adobe Illustrator. If you liked this video, then you might want to check out one of my other videos on mastering graffiti text in Adobe Illustrator. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.